Picture this. A train derails in your city. 50 people are injured, broken bones, bleeding, some not breathing, and you've got 10 staff and one ambulance on scene. What's your first move? If that sounds overwhelming, you're not alone. Mass casualty incidents push us to our limits, but with the right tools, we can save more lives. Welcome to today's lecture, Disaster Medicine, Triage, and Resource Allocation in Mass Casualty Events. My goal is to give you a clear, actionable framework to handle these high-stakes situations. Why does this matter? Disasters, earthquakes, shootings, bombings are happening more often, and as emergency providers, we're the front line. Understanding Mass Casualty Events So, what's a Mass Casualty Incident, or MCI? It's any event where the number of patients or the severity of their injuries exceeds your immediate resources. Think of the 2017 Las Vegas shooting. 58 dead, over 500 injured, or Hurricane Katrina, where hospitals were flooded and staff couldn't keep up. These aren't just big emergencies. They're game changers. The challenges? You're short on staff, equipment, and time. Communication often fails, radios go down, cell networks crash. And then there's the ethical weight. Who gets the last ventilator? In an MCI, we shift gears. Normal emergency medicine is about giving every patient 100%. In a disaster, it's about the greatest good for the greatest number. That's a tough mindset to adopt, but it's what works. Studies from the American College of Emergency Physicians show that structured triage and resource management can double survival rates in these scenarios. So how do we do it? Let's start with triage. Principles of triage in disaster settings. Triage in an MCI isn't like triaging chest pain in the ED. It's fast, it's brutal, and it's about sorting patients into who needs help now and who can wait or won't make it. The goal is to identify priorities in under a minute per patient. Two systems dominate disaster triage, START and SALT. START stands for simple triage and rapid treatment. It's been around since the 1980s, developed by fire departments in California. Here's how it works. You assess four things. Can they walk? Are they breathing? Do they have a pulse? And can they follow commands? Based on that, you tag them green, Walking wounded, minor injuries, think sprained ankles. Yellow, delayed, serious but stable, like a femur fracture with good vitals. Red, immediate, life-threatening, like airway obstruction or massive bleeding. Black, expectant or deceased, no pulse, no breathing after basic airway opening. For example, a patient's unconscious, not breathing even after you tilt their head back. Black tag, move on. Harsh, but it's about speed. Start strength is simplicity. 30 seconds per patient. No equipment needed. Then there's salt, sort, assess, life-saving interventions, treatment slash transport. It's newer, backed by the CDC and trauma experts. Salt starts with a group sort. Everyone who can walk, move over here. Then assesses individuals. The twist. You can do quick interventions like opening an airway or slapping on a tourniquet before tagging. Categories are similar. Minimal, delayed, immediate, expectant, dead. Salt's more flexible but takes slightly longer. Which is better? Starts faster. Salt's more thorough. The U.S. military uses start in combat zones, while FEMA leans toward salt for civilian disasters. Either way, practice it. You're aiming for 60 seconds max per patient. And yes, tagging someone black, knowing they might die, feels awful. Data from the 2011 Japan earthquake showed triage cut mortality by 20% in overwhelmed hospitals. It works, even if it's hard. Resource allocation strategies. Now, triage gets patients sorted, but what about resources? In an MCI, you've got limited staff, gear, and space. The principle here is maximize survival. Let's break it down. First, personnel. Assign roles fast. One team triages, another treats, someone handles transport. The incident command system used by FEMA and hospitals nationwide is your backbone, designate a leader, keep it structured. Second, equipment. Ventilators, intravenous fluids, trauma kits, count what you have. Prioritize high impact interventions. The American Trauma Society says controlling hemorrhage beats prolong CPR in an MCI. 
Tourniquets save more lives per minute than chest compressions when you're stretched thin. Example, you've got three ventilators, five patients in respiratory failure. Pick the three with the best shot, younger patients, less trauma. It's not fair. It's effective. Third, space. Set up zones. Red for immediate, yellow for delayed, green for minor. During the 2010 Haiti earthquake, field hospitals used this to manage thousands. Here's a scenario. A bus crash, 20 victims, one ambulance. You've got two vents and five critical patients. Triage tags three red, two black. Ventilate the reds with the strongest vitals, send them first. The blacks, pain meds if you can, but their last priority. That's rationing in action. Collaboration is key. EMS, nearby hospitals, even the National Guard, tap them. The 2013 Boston Marathon response worked because hospitals shared resources fast. Know your local mutual aid plan. Flexibility matters too. When the plan fails, improvise. Real-world application and case study. Let's ground this in reality with the 2013 Boston Marathon bombing. Two homemade bombs, three dead, 264 injured many with amputations from shrapnel. EMS triaged on scene using start. Runners with minor cuts, green. Bleeding limbs, red. Unresponsive, black. Hospitals like Mass General got 127 patients in an hour. They cleared EDs, set up zones, and prioritized surgery for hemorrhaging patients. Transport was key. Runners carried victims to ambulances, cutting delays. Lessons. Rapid triage and transport saved lives. Studies estimate 90% of critical patients survive thanks to speed. Communication was messy, radios clogged, but teamwork pulled it through. For you, practice matters. Run MCI drills with your team. Know your hospital's disaster plan and who's in charge. Chaos is guaranteed, so adapt. Ethical considerations and self-care. MCIs force tough calls. Who gets the last bed? Age, injury severity, or first come first serve? There's no perfect answer. The American Medical Association says prioritize survival odds, but VIPs or kids can complicate it. In the 2005 London bombings, medics faced this. Some patients got left behind. It's not personal, it's math. Then there's you. These events scar providers. A 2019 study in pre-hospital and disaster medicine found 30% of MCI responders reported PTSD symptoms. Debrief with your team. Talk it out. Hospitals like Johns Hopkins now mandate post-disaster counseling. You can't save everyone, but with a plan, you save more. Protect your headspace, too. Let's wrap up. Triage start or salt sorts patients fast. Resource allocation prioritizes high-impact care and teamwork. Preparedness, drills, plans, ethics ties it together. You've got the framework now. Go learn your local MCI protocol and you'll be ready. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.